Good evening, America, and welcome to New November Presents Storytime. We ain't got no uh, pop filters on the windows today, so you could probably hear the kids playing outside. It's all good. We encourage that. It's a good day outside. Get out there, kids. Anyway, this story is kind of a... I mean, we got another episode for you. It's not an episode. It's an episode. It's an episode about some ops. So I call it an op. You see what I did there? And it takes place in... Let's rewind the clock back to 2013. Graduation year. Got in a lot of trouble my graduation year. Not really trouble, but I got in a lot of street shit. Uh, So, I'm from Alexandria, Virginia. Stand up. I'm from the north side. All right? And... We are, I, when I was in high school, let's just, let's just start there. <laughs> I, got, I went to high school in Alexandria. And there was this thing in our high school. Many high schools probably got this called Academy for Us, where you could take a bus to a different school to go to a class in that school that maybe your uh, school didn't offer. So our, our school, we, did a, we had Academy where we could take buses and shit and other schools could take buses. So. At the time, me and my homies, uh, if you if you if you recall from uh, another story time, we was fucking with some some foreign bitches at the time, like a little group of foreign bitches, little freaky foreign bitches. They were just ready to do whatever for the for the for the set, whatever, whatever we said. They was ready to do. Pass them, it ain't no fun if the homie can't have none. That's what we was on. So um, that was cool. You know what I'm saying? That was great. That was gravy. Problem, well, not problem for, for for us. Problem for them niggas was that uh these young ladies were these niggas' girlfriends. Like, baby, I love you. Talk on the phone all night. Go to sleep on the phone. Kiss me through the phone. Is that these niggas was was with with them like in that way, romantically, if you will. And me and my niggas, uh, you know what we was on. But it got kind of crazy because. Rest in peace to the to the cuz. One of my homies, he had caught some severe feelings for for one of the young ladies. We're not gonna say no names here. He had caught some severe feelings for one of the young ladies. He even got her little initials tatted on him. A lot of niggas don't know that because he got it real small, but it's me. Um her nigga wanted all the smoke with him. And 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 all my niggas on this side, because her, her nigga had his little crew of niggas. I don't know what the fuck they were, but they lived in an area called Hegel Circle. Now check this out: Hegel Circle is about twenty minutes, eleven miles from from where I'm at right now. You know what I'm saying? Twenty nine, thirty minutes. You know what I mean? Eleven miles from from where we are right now in Alexandria, Virginia. Right? Same hood. All right. These niggas would talk. To, I hate when niggas talk to female spicy. You know what I mean? If you got a problem with a nigga, I see. I, like, listen to your uncle Izzy. Don't get on a female phone, man. Yeah, fuck that nigga, Boy, man. Tell that nigga. First off, I will never, and all my days, and all my days, will I ever tell a female to tell a nigga something for me? The fuck. I'm a grown ass man. What do I look like telling her to tell you something? This ain't this ain't telephone. That we play back in elementary school. This ain't pass the message. And half the nine times out of ten, the female gon' gonna either spice it up to something like like heavier than what you was saying, or she gonna tone it down if you was too spicy. And if you was too spicy, you wanted that. You wanted him to hear it the way you motherfucking said it. You know, so no, never going through a female to tell a nigga nothing. But they would. They would always do that shit. We'd be sitting around smoking, laughing at these niggas like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which one of y'all about to get fucked next? You know what I'm saying? We was not trying. You know what I'm saying? We, This is not for kids, man. We're going to have to put a damn, a damn joint on this one. But I'm telling you, like, it was it was really it was really just it was really just them acting crazy. So one night, the homie, he said, man, fuck you, y'all trying to do. I'm bored. I say, because you know I had I had a I had a few of them over there myself. I say let's go to let's go to their hood. Let's go to Hegel Circle. You know what I'm saying? Let's go to Hegel Circle and see what's cracking. No, 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 no. Before that, like a two days or some shit before that, I had went to uh 
the other high school. So I, I'm not going to say no names. We got pictures. We went to the other high school. You know what I'm saying? On my dolo, on my fadoli, just being wild. Just being a young wild nigga. Like, fuck it. I don't got no classes over there. They, those girls, they came to our school for classes and shit. I just got on a bus and went to their school. Like, man, where's these niggas at that supposedly? I seen like two of them. You know what I mean? I'm over here chatting with the females. I see them in the hallway. I just want them to see me. See, like, sometimes, like, especially back then, it was all about, like, what a, what a motherfucker... You, you take things from a motherfucker when you start proving them wrong. Like, so if them niggas was, for instance, if them niggas would be like, man, yeah, tell them niggas when we see them, we going whoop, 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 whoop. All right. Yeah, cool. So I go to your school, and I'm in your little... Your little... The bell ring. I'm everybody in the hallway and everything. Y'all could have packed me out. You know what I'm saying? But they didn't. Long story short, nothing happened to me, which made them look crazy. And then security was alarmed or whatever, so I got the fuck up out of there. I got it the fuck up out of there, man. What? Come on, man. It was wild. But the craziest shit, the craziest shit about it, right, is the next night or the night after that, we we decided we was going to go to Hegel Circle. At the time, this rapper from, from D.C. near and did an area named Shot Glizzy, he had a song out called Busters, where he would just be Dragging, I don't know who the fuck he was talking about. Maybe some other nigga from DC and Maryland, but he was wilding on cuz. Just talk. You look it up. Look it up when you when you're done with this. Side glizzy busters wilding cuz out, just talking all types of niggas talking, but they can't be talking about me. So we went to their hood. I said, open up all the doors. My homie, my one homie, he always be driving the whip. He'd be like, man, don't. He man, let's not. You know what I'm saying? He was not really. <laughs> I love you to death. I love you to death. But you were not built for that kind of shit. And I always put you in that kind of shit. And I'm sorry, man. We we both probably wasn't built for that kind of shit. And I always put us in that shit because I'm sorry. Anyway, I said, open all the doors. Um, We open all the doors. Turn that shit up. And then I said, play that Busters joint. These niggas, Busters. Oh, mm, motherfuckers. Nigga, i shoot your mother. I mean, Shaq Lizzie was wilding on that track, yo. Go look it up. But we bumping that shit. One of the females hit me up like, yo. Uh, no, I hit one of the females but like, we on the way. She hit me up like, yo, that's y'all. And I'm like, yeah, that's us. She's like, yo, they out, they, they ain't here with the guns, right? And in there, with the, in the crib with the guns. Like, oh, yeah, they, yo, y'all need to... Ooh, ooh, ooh. We ain't doing shit. Keep in mind, we ain't had no guns. We was just some young, wild niggas. But we wasn't afraid of nothing either. You feel me? So they was like, oh, he in there with the guns. Woo, woo, woo. They putting the guns together. They about to come. Do, 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 do. Keep in mind. Remember what I said. Your Uncle Izzy said type of niggas these niggas is. They talk to females and let females do the translation. So why the fuck she out here telling us about the gun? You supposed to be outside with the gun. Not inside. Make... <laughs> Make this make sense to a real one. You feel me? So all that happens and absolutely, I say that to say absolutely nothing happened. Nobody came out. None of that. The females came out eventually. You feel me? But you see what I'm saying? Like, look, the moral of this story, why Izzy had to tell you this one is because you if you're not a, you can beat niggas mentally. You can fuck niggas up without touching them. Half the fights I got in, niggas was already defeated before they even met me in the flesh. I had a op like last year or so, and I not and niggas might not even caught on to the fact that I was dragging this nigga through YouTube, and he had he had the channel before me, ate that nigga's food, bro. You got to understand, man, a lot of the times, especially when there's females involved, you can beat these niggas without touching them. All you got to do is be yourself and prove that they not who they say they are. Not one time has one of these niggas stepped out here and proved that I was not who the fuck I said I was and niggas have tried. I'm just, I'm, I'm not out here portraying to be, neither was the homies, out here portraying to be the biggest gangsters, the biggest anything, the biggest none of that drug dealers, none of that, none of that wild shit. We was not out here trying to pretend to be nobody. We was just being ourselves. Niggas came out with guns. Niggas came out with this. Niggas came out with that. And we stood, stood, stood 10. 
And we never, well, you know what I'm saying? We never strayed away from that. And we didn't even have to fight a lot of times. All we had to do was show up. And it was like, y'all said, you know what I'm saying? Because we wasn't the niggas talking crazy. Y'all said, when these niggas show up, you were supposed to do this, this, and this niggas showed up to two different locations where you supposed to be at playing loud music. And this is not the only instance where I've had to do that to a nigga. We gonna get into that into some more story times. But this already been ten minutes and shit, and I already know people probably falling asleep, brushing their teeth, wiping their feet. I don't know, picking their nose. I already done. I don't. I don't bored you. But look, get in the comments. Let me know if you ever had a similar situation. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'm out, man.